discussing for all the way to the public service players. And this is also a lady. And the thing is that the last was the last speaking. And the whole reason we had was talent. All those who are important to serve because they are higher. The people that are speaking, they need to invite them, they need to go. Allow us to carry out uh, your, your great philosophy of uh, love and care and doing for the others as we have been doing to us. So, bless you, prayer, and thank you for your presence in the world. And we give you all the honor for this church and for the money who is the servant in this church. And this is the name of the Lord.
Alan is a world pastor of the Canadian Center for the World History. Good morning, my name is Lawrence Perlman, I'm the pastor of the Center for the World History. Good morning, my name is Lawrence Perlman, I'm the pastor of the Center for the World History. Good morning, my name is Administrator, Ruben Potter. That, that, that is hard. It's for the homeless. 
and um, I know he is willing to work riches in order to address that issue of Um Anybody else? Anybody who just came in, you want to speak to the homeless okay. issue here in St. Thomas? How do I hear? Yeah. Uh, I want to observe too is that a lot of people who are homeless one second, one second. come only because of financial issues. Yes, that's one of the things. Um, some might be mental health also. Okay. Yes. We also have drug addicts who are homeless, and that's a major problem. Even those who are trying to recover, because I've seen a couple of them who you can see they're not where they used to be. But where do we, how do you help them? And how do you, where do you put them to continue to mm -hmm. progress mm -hmm. to get back to where they should be? Mm -hmm. That is a major issue. Right? Okay, good. Okay, good. I'll try, I'll try. Mm -hmm. um, I know that the Methodist Church did a, they did a you know, survey or um, you know, so that's a, they you know, have statistics you know, and one was done not too long ago. Maybe, I think less than a year. They uh, have a lot of... Um, Society and in our communities, um, not only can they allay dangers to themselves, but they can pose a danger to um, us, other folks in society. Um, I work where I work downtown. There is a lot more younger people that are being homeless and are mentally challenged. And I see every single Saturday when they come out to give them food that it is increasing. The one thing that I've noticed also is that the families when you have a mental issue with a, an individual in the family, a mother, a brother, whoever, the family is not educated. And I think that's the one thing that we need to do when uh, a tragedy like that occurs, it affects everyone in the family. The family needs to be educated on how to handle it. So even so, when we have a situation that arises, there's nowhere, there's no information, no directory where to go how to handle it, how to prepare, because the prevention could be a big help as too far as letting it linger and then you have a homeless person, a mentally challenged person walking the street that's also dangerous. So as us as we're standing here and sitting here to this morning, um, as we're getting together, I think that there also needs to be a direct directory to the churches if they have a program, each of us should know what program you have. So if we have someone that comes into the churches, we could also recommend them to go to Pastor Hazel's church, Pastor Zohor's church, whoever church it is, whatever programs that you have, but we need to be educated on how to handle it and how to deal with it. Okay, so 
One of the things I do is really say that's rightly important is the director of children and the resources of the world. Thank you. Yeah, um, as you may be aware, um, the Department of Human Services does have a homelessness um, uh, uh, division that has a lot of information. They've collected a lot of information yes. over the years that can inform a lot of what you, you, you try to do. Yeah. Um, what that information showed us was that um, more and more people are homeless inside of homes than on the streets. Yes. These are people you see every day, but they don't. They, they don't crash by somebody here tonight, sleep in a car the next day. Yeah. They have kids, and the kids are homeless with them. Yeah. I literally had a man living on the beach with his son. And one day I came up and saw him living on the beach. Yeah. And I told him, you can't have, can have a boy living in the beach. And they are not prepared. A lot of homeless people come here just to be homeless. Yeah, a lot of them are coming from Puerto Rico. Come from the states, a lot of them. They just come here because it's warm and they can be homeless. And so, all you do is give them a one way ticket, call their parents or their families if they have any contact, and send them back one way. But that adds to the to the resource limitation because they take up a lot of the capacity for all the homeless people. So. Yeah. I wasn't aware of that. I like to interject also that there are some people, some churches, the Wesleyan Holiness Church, I don't know anyone here representing them. They normally cook, and I think on a weekend, and they take it around um, to give uh, food to the homeless. Also, I think they're certain that I'm just sorry, I really didn't call them, and, but I'll be reach out to them. They also have a kitchen here that they cook, and they take uh, food around into the community. Okay, so they, they didn't do it. Um, I don't know if they had to smell it, but I'm talking well about them. They normally smell the food over here, and they make us hungry. Walk by the sea they do it, I think. I'm not sure. Walk us by the sea. By the sea. Oh, yeah. And they can come in and share the experience with us. I know three persons. I, I think there are more persons too. I think Zion, they do it kind of off and on. I think also Faith Christian Fellowship Church, they also do it too. Um, Pastor Fernando, I attribute to him also. Salvation Army, they do it on a regular really basis. St. Andrews also has a soup kitchen. And there's some others came in. Okay, so this is uh, the, the bishop that is here from St. Andrew. It's good to have him. Okay, and I think yeah. uh, one of his membership. Yeah. And some others came in too. Okay. We just came in. You just make us know your name. Uh, yeah. Don't tumble. Just go around. I have your microphone. That's why. I saw from the bishop. <laughs> come, come, come to the job. And, and we're streaming it. That's why we're doing it. So don't get scared. We're doing, we're doing good so far. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ambrose Dons, and I'm the Bishop of the Episcopal Church. Good morning. My name is Iris Payne Shalon. I worship at St. Andrew's Church, but I'm here with Bishop Dons because we have some programs we work on together. Good morning. My name is Adnan Mwati. I represent the Deep Life Christian Ministries. Dennis S. Swift, Center of the Council. Rudolph and Dolores Hedrington, we represent the New Beginning Christian Fellowship, Pastor Good morning, my name is Sofia Del Rosario. I am the Center. Uh, but, um, Church of God, Rosa Good morning. My name is Jackie Freeman, and I'm representing the Virgin Islands Police Department. I was also, I also want to say, we also have a feed-in program where we feed about 100 homeless people in this community every month. That's in Fort Baptist Church, and we've been doing that for the last 15 years. Um, excuse me? What days? We do it once a month. We do it on a Saturday, but it fluctuates. It might be the first Saturday, the second Saturday. We did it last Saturday. Um, the areas we, we find, and my folks that do it, they, they really know the area. I went with them a couple of times, and it would just blow your mind where you see people live, how, how people, or where people live in St. Thomas. I mean, 
the first time I went them, I couldn't eat for the whole day. And you see people living, um, they put four pallets together with a cardboard over it. You go in the area by Bovoni, right where they fight the roosters across from that area where they have some machines. And we park right by the garbage bin, they have some garbage bin there, and up under those trees, that's where people live. Um, you go in, in the area by my Traco Park, there's a, <laughs> I didn't know people lived in there. There's like a hole in by Traco Park on the back, and a whole lot of people live in there. I mean, it's just, it just blow your mind with people living in So we've been doing that for the last 15 years, and we have at our church, we have a big area downstairs where we have five um, showers, and we didn't do it last year, but two consecutive years, a year before and a year before, we, we were able to pick up about 12 of them and bring them and get a warm shower. The folks brought out some clothing and everything was together. And we actually sat with them and they ate and just sharing with them. And some of the folks alluded to it earlier, the, the kind of problems that they have mentally. And a lot of them really don't want to be there. You know, um, but it seems like they have no choice. And, um, you know, it's really a problem. And really, I'm glad that we're here today to try to address it and whatever we could do to alleviate that problem. What was brought to my attention? Well, let me tell you my experience. My family, we love to camp. So, you know, we go and we get out some of the biggest tents you can get and set it up on the beach or wherever and we camp. Well, one, we were missing a few of those poles. So we decided, you know what, they're on sale at Kmart, let's just discard this tent. And our tent has our name on it, Ayala. So we just we threw the tent away and we bought another one. And um, something totally not relevant, we just went hiking. And guess what we saw? That old, and how did we know it was ours? The name was on it. And the tent was, I don't know what they did, but they took some sticks or something for that pole that was missing. They put whatever together and the tent was beaten up. And I'm telling you, it was about, it was, I would like to say at least three months later, after we threw first threw the tent out, that we came across some folks have that tent up living in the tent. And that's what really opened my eyes to the extent of the homeless issue we have in the Virgin Islands. And that really broke my heart. That really, my, my son at that time, he was seven, and he said, can we just take them to live with us? And I said, I wish we could, but we can't. You know, I said, some of them don't want to, they look at it as charity. So the thing is, when we are making our approaches, we have to make sure that we don't come across that I pity you, or this is a charity thing that I'm doing. Because if you come across that way, we've lost. You understand? As long as we come across that way, we've lost. And we will continue to keep losing. So that's one of the stories that I wanted to share as um, what opened my eye. was an eye opener for me on the homeless issue. What I want to say is, the fact is, our churches do have the resources. And if we pull together and put every, all the churches together and we know, okay, well, here you are in Smith Bay fitting on a Wednesday, whoever it is in someplace else on a Tuesday, if we can come together and put all our resources together and find volunteers in our own churches, we can reach a lot more folks that way. So, I have a question for you. Do you know what happens to a homeless person when he or she dies? What happens to that body, to the corpse? Anybody? Before I answer that question, I like to ask a question because um, is, there, is there a government program that addresses the homeless? Do we have some government programs that, um, I think somebody mentioned it before, that the Department of Human, Human Services, services. yeah. I'm just say, housing is concerned, because that's one of the key issues of housing. Is the I, churches have difficulty putting money together to produce the housing. Right. And if the government is serious about this, 
The government is serious, especially right here in St. Thomas, the administrator for St. Thomas. This is his home. This is what he, he's getting into. This is his baby. Okay, so um, I'm so sorry he isn't here today. Unfortunately, I sent him out that invitation a little too late. And he had um, a prior engagement. He really would have loved like to be here because he could have shed more light on that. But anyway, what I said to him is that we're just here to establish a committee. For that committee, we want a head and assistant there. Um, a head and assistant, a secretary and a treasurer, and then other folks involved. And then when we start having regular meetings, he will be here because this is what this is what he's about. He really wants this issue addressed in the best way possible. So yeah, we do have some, but we have to also remember that we don't have a government that's even rich. You know, that even that's even well off. Let me say. So we do have to do our part. I saw another hand. I Question. I think I'm going to answer your question. If you were to move on, yes. What happens? What what becomes? What happens to a person who dies? Yes. Who next person? For the corpse. What happens to that corpse? To that dead body? Anybody knows? Just another that has access to over to the government, and then because there's no one to clean the body, there's no financial um assist, no one to to do what needs to be done. Am I right? Right, and it stays it stays in the morgue for a long time. Do you know why? Does anybody know why? Because there are no papers, there are no documents. So security, we, we, we identify them. And a lot of the times they would not bury you if they cannot properly identify you. So I'm saying that to say this. When we establish this committee, part of the duty will also be to help the system in getting IDs and the proper documentation and we might we, we will be in a place where we can actually house that documentation um for them to get a proper ID the issue is for you to be able to get your social security card if you don't have one you need a picture ID driver's license a passport for you to be able to get a driver's license or passport, what do you need? A social security card or your birth certificate. For you to get a birth certificate, what would you need? A social security card or, or a picture ID. It's a problem that they're experiencing. And we that becomes our problem too because we need to know how to get the system to assist them. Okay? That's true. I've had some experiences like that. Um, there was a gentleman, um, our church is called Hotel Refuge. People think, <laughs> but it means spiritual first of all, because God is our refuge and strength, and also in our vision is to have a transitional part of the mission, the mission and the vision. But I've had persons who um, have sold it, and I set them up and said, There are benefits out there for you. So I gave them the information and the directive of how to get, as you say, a social security number, make sure that's in place. With the various departments to go to. Now, the last incident we had, we had a gentleman that had, he was very, very wealthy from the States, but there are various reasons for him to become homeless. His property was taken because the developer went in and bought the whole block in Florida. He became homeless, so he came to St. Thomas to move him around. So he actually moved on now to Puerto Rico. Um, so I told him, he said, you know, and get some benefits. So we went and we got, I guess, food stamps. And um, he applied for um, this um, disability income because he has, it, the problem has grown, he developed a mental problem because of the pressure and the, 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 you know, the problem of it. So, um, so there are various reasons for homelessness. And then we, as for the congregation, as pastors and leaders, to, to get information. Another thing, I said, please, Officer William, 
I need some contact. If something were to happen to you, who do we call while you're coming to our ministry? While you're moving around, I need three contacts with phone numbers. So I have that. As a matter of fact, it's easy for me calls me because they need him to go and take the various physical tests so we can get the benefits, but he moves on because in the case that somebody's struggling by the same person who put the strategy, so he has a, um, a mental problem from that. So he's moving next place. And then he said, I don't need a home now. I don't need anything. I just live a life and, and, and out in the, you know. So I said, no, it's, it shouldn't be like that. We've been praying for him, but he has not had some reasons he left. Maybe he was, he has a number. So it's, it's the church needs. Just, my point is just take information. They're directly coming to your church. And they look like they don't have a stable home and some people to happen, to have contact. And you can Google anything now, you can find and Facebook and all of that. So I will be able to get that information. So let's just take a look at this. Also, when you have families, and if I'm homeless, if I became homeless at the remote fault of my own, I don't want you to take my son from me. See, I don't want you to take my children. So I will hide. And what happened, I will reject your assistance because I will feel that, yeah, you're just trying to get into my business. So when you realize I have a child, by right, you know, we are mandated to report it. So I will feel that, hey, you're going to report me just so that they can take my child from me, put that child in some kind of foster care, and I don't know what will happen to the child. So that in and of itself can drive a person um, you know, just make them have some mental issues and just depend on whatever mental issues that can result from that. So, you know, we have to be careful in our approach. Pastor George said something that there are the folks who are homeless live in somebody's home. That is true too. That is true also that like they live in a car. We, we had um, somebody who has this We kicked her out, and she. So we started telling, her, okay, this is what you have to do. We started helping her, assisting her. So yes, the homeless, the homeless person can be living right in the home with somebody else. And you know, thank God if they live with a Christian family who wants to extol the virtues of Christianity. But what about if they live with somebody who becomes abusive to them? You understand? So yes, we do want to get them up on their own. So um, I will wrap this meeting up by saying, I just wanted to address some of the issues of the homelessness. Now, what we, will, uh, what we would like to do is get a lead, an assistant, a secretary, and a treasurer. You know, for us to at least begin to start having regular meetings, because we know that it's at our heart um, together we have unleash a lot of like resources that like we know who is doing what where and we can find out even more of that. We could even we would I can have it on there, but we can even probably have a person that we could call our resource person. We have a person who can find out those things. So please don't be shy. <laughs> you can nominate your that you're quite capable of handling this. But let's get this committee started. So, do you have somebody who would like to take the lead? And I'd like to read something to you. This is just an overview of what, um, what we're looking at. Our synopsis of, of the homeless, um, homelessness slash mental health, health committee. We see a systematic response ensuring the reduction, elimination, sorry, let me go again. A systematic response ensuring reduction, eliminating repetition, and preventing reoccurrence of homelessness, provision and availability of services to the mentally ill. So one of the things that we can do is that we can get a team of doctors and maybe have them meet, let's say, once every like maybe the first Saturday, first Sunday of the month where they can come in and get like maybe the eyes checked. You know, just different. Yeah. Those are some ideas of what 
I would like for this committee to do. So, do I have anybody? Is this a microphone, microphone. Yeah, we have for today we're between homeless after school and incarcerated. Say it again, let me say it again. Say it again. Yeah, so I, I, I am not going to be trying to be However, I would like to be um I would like to to assist where I can be the most impact. So I need to know what are all the different committees that I have so I can make an informed decision. Okay, so Right now, there are eight committees that we will be forming eventually. The first three that we're working with will be homelessness slash mental health, after school, and the prison ministry or um, to the incarcerated. The others that we'll be looking at is will be um, youth. We'll be looking at the youth committee. We'll be looking at. Would you like me to read like all the synopsis as I say them? As I said, the companies, would you like to know? Okay, let me start again. Homeless slash mental health will be a systematic response ensuring reduction in the making repetition, repetition, sorry, and preventing reoccurrence of homelessness, provision and availability of services to the mentally ill. But after school, it will be service to children in a non threatening environment that seeks to maximize their imagination, attention, and creativity. You create and sustain a youth empowerment program which enables youth to be in an environment of increasing learning, becoming a valuable asset to society. Schools, and we also be doing schools, foster, maintain, and sustain the integrity of the school environment, so which means we can do like booty free zones and what have you at different schools. Prison assist in recruiting academic and re entry into the system, assist with reintegration into society, environment, keeping neighborhoods and communities clean for a healthier island, adults, assisting adults to be competent and able to help children with homework, seniors, ensuring that no senior member of our island experiences loneliness abandonment and abuse. Encourage positive medical health and benefits. So these are our vision synopsis of each of the areas. Um, I sent it to Pastor Hazel and he will be assisting me in getting it to, out to everybody. That will be both in St. Croix and St. Thomas. Because we're just starting as you know. I'm sorry I don't have it uh, printed out for you. But that is what we're looking at. So if you know where best you'll be able to assist, we would really like to just come up and say, okay, well, I don't mind doing this area. Because it will make it, you know, that's at the heart. If that's something that's at your heart, it will make it a lot easier for us. And then from there, we can go on with having our different committees and, and figuring out how exactly we will address this issue. Because each one, would, would be different from the next. As you can see, even in the synopsis, it is very different. So having said that. So, so what was the problem? Prison, homelessness, and mental health are connected. Yes. All three. So I wouldn't mind assist with mental health, because that's my Yeah, uh, mental days. health will go with homelessness, and then prison ministry will go uh, by itself. I know, but they're all, they're all yes. Most people in jail, a lot of people in jail have mental health issues because there's no place to put them, so we put them in jail. Yes. Um, so, yeah, that's just like that. But, so, what I, I can I can assist with mental health, and homelessness, and also have somebody assist whose primary strength is homelessness. Okay. My primary strength is homelessness. Okay. If that's possible. 
yes, that would be impossible. So, um, so we put it for past as the um, lead for the homeless committee for Okay, that's just one I can work together. Um, we did some work a long time ago, and he has a lot of knowledge and training. Does he take a lead up the assistant? Or what That person will assist in the fundraising when will be the person to um, do the fundraising ventures. It has to be something that you like to do. So I guess as we grow, we we'll have to fill that position. Going once, second time, the body, okay. How about a resource person? Okay, um, officer. Okay. The resource person will be the person to um, think of the resources, like find us, find out what's going on, like um, how many different people we have, where you know. Yes. So Hazel gave um, a very good idea. He said that there are some folks who are not here. You know, um, we didn't get out to everybody in time. So you're saying that there are some folks who are not here presently and that is what they're engaged in. So what we'll do is that we will have another meeting where we'll ensure that they will be able to be present. And if you add that you want to restructure the committee, then we can do that. Okay, so in that way, we, we make sure that you have a heart for what you're doing. Okay, um, did I give you calendars? No? Mm -hmm. I have some calendars here. And what I would like, take one and pass it. What we're 
is we're going to establish just, just get the, the time, so she has the time, the place, and the frequent meeting. Okay. Thank you. Yes, 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 thank Okay, so as a time, place, and day, we can meet on a regular basis. This particular committee, yeah, yes. And then as we go to the other committees, we'll, we'll um, do that also. Can you pull those calendars, please? So there is a um, sign-in sheet passing around. If you can sign that for me, please, that'd be awesome. Okay, so a day, a day in the week that you that is conducive for this meeting, day and time. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Monday on the floor. Is that good for everybody who will be on this committee? What time Monday? What time would be good for you on the committee? Question. This 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 committee is everyone committed to the to the homeless um, program. That's that that the persons that are here that we need to find to who would be a part of each committee. Maybe that's not their area. And yes. then once we find out who would be a part of it, then we can uh, send to send our day and get back to you. It's um, what we want to do now is be able to send out an email getting which will be able to reach more person. Letting them know, okay, well, we'll start meeting on a Monday. So then when they come out, like I said, when everybody, those who are not here, when we get them on board, we can end up restructuring the committee. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to ask there's actually no date now, so that we know, okay, well, April, Monday, April, whatever that date will be, we'll be meeting. So then, we by that time, we don't get everybody else who is interested in that area. And then from there, we can move on. Hopefully, not before. Once a month, you can get a night You tell me. I'm going back for the day, but you tell me. Any day but Monday. Any day but Monday. That doesn't mean you have to come over because this is the, yes, April 2nd. I'll try and come over as much as I can, like, just to actually assist in getting the committee off its feet. But, um, but then that will do it because I want it to be your project. You see what last flight is there. Okay. 
Are we limited to just a committee, a, a lead, assistant, treasurer, and everything? So, because I, I was selling classes of more, I have a, a lady in my church that heads up the homeless ministry. And I would volunteer, I would volunteer her for, to be a part of this. It doesn't have to be in any particular legal assistant, but just to be there. And she has a lot to offer because she's been telling me that for 15 years. And for all you know, when she comes, Pastor Zamora might say that we stay for the day. That's right, that's okay. So if we can at least send a day for us to meet again, so that she will be there, and then we can have some more information available, I can uh, make sure that, if, because if I set the date now, then I can guarantee you that the administrator will be there the next time. Let's just try and set a day. Even if, it, even if it's not a day that we're going to give you one to meet sometime next week, which I think next week is a short week, also, right? Next week is a short week. Yes, next week is a short week. Uh, April 5th and 6th, I will not be available. Most of us will not be available because we um, are training coming up. That we actually want, to, um, I have the flyers here to give you to see. Um, we need at least five more folks from St. Thomas St. John. April 7th. Yes, That's a Thursday. Okay. April 7th. Yeah, give me a time, April 7th. That sounds good. Okay, so anybody interested, even if you are here representing your church and you're not interested, but you know there's somebody in your church interested in it, let them know our next meeting will be Thursday, April 7th at 10 a.m. Um, when would you like to have this meeting? I didn't ask Pastor if it was. I was just told that April 7th could be on the carnival week. Those of you who have a calendar, you don't know. When is it? When is it? Okay. When is it? 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 When is I didn't know. I was, um, I was going to say, the House of Refuge in Sugar State. That's a correspondent. I don't want to do that. That's a part of my dear so you know, um, it's not really, they have a parking around there. We just had to walk with you. Several parking lots around there. Um, lots of refuge, which is across from Shuri State, Okay, so we have Global Life, we have lots of refuge. I have a volunteer in Global Life Church, but I'm not going to do that. I have a parking, okay. So we have three. We have St. Paul's Church, we have House of Refuge, and we have Global Life. And we want the one that has for a game. Okay, so anybody else? St. Paul? Okay, so St. Paul is fine. So let me run down again. meeting Thursday, April 7th at 10 a.m. at St. Paul's Church. Sounds good? Okay. Um, as long as you're interested in it, please show up. If you have somebody in your church, you can send them so that we can formulate this um, committee. We'll have more folks here because we know 
that we don't have all the folks here. And so at that time, you can decide if you want to restructure or if you're going to keep your committee members, okay? And the committee members, you can also decide for yourself, oh, I'm not too sure, maybe not. I don't want to do it anymore. Yes, I want to stay in this position, okay? Amen? All right, next order, after school. And does everybody have a, um, does everybody have an agenda? I have three sets of agenda. One has, you'll see that it has a different um, heading, but it's the exact same thing we're doing. Because we're here to try and establish the committees, that's why. None of the committees will be on an island unto itself. They will, you know how a Venn diagram is like somehow or the other they're interconnected. So they all will be interconnected. But we realize that if we can make then we can reach out more. So after school will be we're looking at where children who don't have anywhere to go, maybe the parents are still at work or something can get into that um, that committee and they can be well taken care of. I will say something for the school. Oh, after school senior youth. These three sections, anybody who will be dealing with those three sections must have a police clearance. Police report must be done. Okay, we cannot, so whoever is on the committee for these, you have to go and get your parents as possible. Right? But something else, not only the boss have a valid health card. A valid health card, yes. I Somebody actually told me about that. I, I didn't realize that, that it was supposed to have a valid health card. Thank you for mentioning that. Sir? Oh, microphone, microphone. In our church, anyone working with children must have a safe body class children, recognizing abuse on the children, and such a lot training and then knock out one out of the persons working with our children. Oh, that is another thing. We're trying. We're trying to get a hold of various folks in the committee, in the community, sorry, who can give assist in like various trainings, like make us more knowledgeable, let's say like homelessness, after school care and what have you. So if you know somebody in your church who um, can speak to certain trainings, yes, we want, we want to be aware of them. We want to make sure that that happens. Also through our Department of Human Services, we can request their assistance. Yes. Um, if we have the numbers, we have the location, they will come out and do the training. Okay. Very good. Yes. I forgot that also. And I think um, um, County Resource Center, they're another one. They can assist with the training. Um, did we start? That's another group that will assist with training. Yes. So I will just go right to it for after school. What are some of the after school programs that you have here, maybe affiliated 